everybody to another episode of Coffee with ADHD Experts. This innovative series brings together some of the most eminent experts in ADHD in mental health in the world. So who we are? Let me introduce you to Dr. Echevarria Norma. She is a medical doctor and adult psychiatry, president of ADHD chapter in AAP Argentina, APA International Fellow, ADHD Federation member, and she is also a member of the Hispanic Psychiatry Association. And myself, I'm Eleonora Giusti, PhD. I'm a clinical psychologist, vice president of the ADHD chapter APP in Argentina, and a clinical and family therapist, professor at Palermo University in Buenos Aires, and also professor at the Asociación Neuropsiquiatría in Argentina. Okay, we are honored to introduce today Dr. Luis Rode. He's a professor of child and adolescent psychiatry at the University of Rio Grande do Sul, Brazil. He's the director of the program of ADHD at the hospital, the Clinicas de Porto Alegre, and vice coordinator of the National Institute of Developmental Psychiatry for Children and Adolescent, Brazil. Dr. Roder's research interests include ADHD epidemiology, genetics, pharmacogenetics, neuroimaging, and the effects of pharmacological and psychosocial treatments for ADHD. In 2020, he was included as a highly cited researcher in psychiatry and psychology for the last decade. Let's welcome Dr. Luis Roder to another of our ADHD episodes. Well. Luis Rode, as a researcher and a doctor, and being one of the main references in this field, we wonder what has led you to work with ADHD population? And in your opinion, how did your interventions make a difference? First of all, Thank you very much for the invitation to be talking with our uh, colleagues from Argentina. Uh, it's a really an honor and a pleasure. Uh, your question has two different aspects. How I entered in the ADHD field. This is a very interesting uh, issue because it is, it is a, a clearly a casual uh, uh, it's a casual uh, thing. Uh, I was, I had uh, 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago, 25 years ago, I had just finished my master degree thesis that was on postpartum blues. And at that time, I was working with Professor Maria Lucrecia Zavaski, who was a professor of child psychiatry here and a psychoanalyst of adults and children. And uh, I wanted to do my doctoral degree in a subject related to child psychiatry. In fact, I entered in the medical school when I was 16 years old. And since the very early beginning, from the first year of the medical school, I began to follow Professor Maria Lucrecia Zavaski, making summer uh, fellowships in the child psychiatric unit uh, of our uh, hospital here in Porto Alegre. Okay, but the problem at that time was that there was no mentor with a doctoral degree that was available and interested to do a mentorship in an area of um, child mental health. All of our uh, PhD professors of psychiatry are professors of adult psychiatry, and they are not very interested in issues of child psychiatry. So at that time, Professor Maria Lucrecia Zavaski invited Professor Joseph Biederman from the Harvard uh, University to come to Porto Alegre and to share uh, his uh, data and knowledge about ADHD. Interestingly, uh, Argentina entered in the roots of my interest for ADHD. Why? 
because uh, Professor Biderman, Biderman only accepted to come por, to Porto Alegre because he did his training in uh, Buenos Aires, uh, his medical school, and he has family in Buenos Aires. So coming to Porto Alegre would be a good uh, chance to uh, go to Argentina. So uh, he came to Porto, uh, he came, sorry, to Porto Alegre, and uh, I spent all the four, three to four or five days that he was in Porto Alegre, driving him back and forth in the city of Porto Alegre to Gramado, his uh, and uh, him uh, and his wife, Ellen, and uh, we uh, developed a friendship. Uh, uh, and uh, then he accepted to be my co-advisor for a PhD thesis. And as mm -hmm. his area at that time of main interest as uh, today uh, was ADHD, I was able to make a deal with Professor Ellis Busnello, who was our full professor of psychiatry here in Porto Alegre. He accepted to uh, mentor me in the PhD, if I had uh, someone that would be the expert in child psychiatry, and in this case, ADHD. So the roots of my interest in ADHD are very casual. It could be any other uh, disorder, but it was the way that make me, made me possible at that time to do research on a child mental health area. Uh, and interestingly, Argentina was part of the story. <laughs> but uh, how did your interventions make a difference in this population? Okay, uh, we have a extensive portfolio of research on uh, ADHD uh, nowadays. We do a lot of different uh, issues from uh, basic molecular genetics to sophisticated neuroimaging studies on ADHD. But uh, for far, I think that the, the main contribution of our group was on the epidemiology uh, of uh, ADHD. Why? Uh, because uh, we conducted several cross-sectional studies on the epidemiology, epidemiology of ADHD. We conducted uh, a meta-analysis meta and a meta-regression uh, some years ago on all the literature, on the uh, studies on the prevalence of ADHD. And uh, this is uh, the sixth most cited uh, paper on ADHD uh, worldwide in all, the, uh, in all the history of the literature. If you go to all, everything published up to now on ADHD. And why this study was uh, relevant? Because at that time when we published it in 2007, there was a strong debate on why there was a difference in the prevalence rate of ADHD between United States and the European countries. Mm -hmm. There was an idea at that time that the main drive might be the cultural differences in the societies, that uh, the North American society demanding much more performance would impose an environment for the people and for our for the children that uh, the chance of developing ADHD would be higher. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, we worked with the guys from Pelotas. Pelotas, uh, the people know in Argentina, yes. uh, is a medium city close uh, to the border to Uruguay. 200 uh, kilometers far from Porto Alegre, and they are very strong on epidemiology and in epidemiological methods. And with Bernardo Horta, that had just came from uh, Canada, we conducted one of the first studies in the medical field using a meta-regression. Nowadays, any uh, meta-analysis have uh, has a, a, as a part of meta-regression. But at that time, the meta-regression allowed us there was only 11 studies using meta-regression in the medical field at that time. And the meta-regression uh, uh, allowed us to document that the differences are not cultural differences, 
and there are differences much more related to the methodology uh, between the studies. That uh, the kind of information source, uh, if uh, the questions are were directed for uh, the children, for the parents or the teachers, if impairment was part of the criteria or not, methodological issues drove the, difference. the differences uh, between okay. the two, um, uh, the, the, the different cultures. So uh, uh, we have uh, more than 4,000 citations of this uh, paper. Wow. Uh, wow. And uh, it was, uh, and I think that uh, our contribution, not only because of this paper, but also because uh, 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 in, uh, during uh, our research uh, trajectory, we were able to develop uh, also a good partnership with the people from Pelotas, and they kindly allowed me to uh, conduct the investigations on the birth cohorts. They have four uh, different birth cohorts, the 93 Pelotas birth cohort, the 2004, uh, the eight, 1984, and the 2015 birth cohorts, where they are following everybody that uh, was uh, born in the city in each of these four years. And I'm able to work with the ADHD and some child mental health aspects in the cohorts. So this makes us very strong on the epidemiology of uh, ADHD, not only related to this paper, but also with uh, uh, lots of other investigations that we conducted in the birth cohorts uh, not only assessing the issues of the prevalence and the cultural differences, uh, but also I think that on the phenomenology of ADHD that we conducted. Nowadays, we have in our ADHD outpatient program, 1,300 children adolescents with ADHD and 700 adults with ADHD that we are following uh, clinically and from whom we have all the data regarding uh, phenomenology of ADHD, comorbidities, response to treatment. Uh, so uh, I think that the second area where we made a strong contribution is on the uh, phenomenology of ADHD, mainly nowadays on the uh, trajectories of uh, ADHD. Uh, we, with the birth cohorts and with the clinical samples, we are following uh, these uh, people with ADHD uh, during uh, their development. And uh, with this, we are able to document, I think, the two important issues. The first one, a very controversial one, is the one of the uh, late onset ADHD. Mm -hmm. And the second one is uh, the idea that uh, ADHD, as any other mental disorder, is a disorder that is related to our genetic back uh, background but also with environmental uh, causes and issues. So the interplay between genetics and uh, environment uh, make the uh, phenotype of ADHD. So uh, if you agree and you think that these uh, are important forces for the etiology of mental disorders, it's easy to understand that sometimes you might have some level or a median level uh, of genetic vulnerability and you depend of a higher uh, environmental demand to manifest the phenotype. And that uh, as with anxiety and as with um, uh, depression, uh, you might have some times in your uh, life where uh, the symptoms will be above the symptomatic, the diagnostic threshold and other moments that you are uh, will be below. Uh, be, uh, below the symptomatic or the diagnostic threshold. And we have a paper, uh, not uh, the first author is Meg Sibley with the guys from the MTA that they kindly mm -hmm. invite me to work with them, uh, clearly documented that probably will appear uh, soon in the American Journal of Psychiatry documenting in the MTA this pattern. Uh, so I think that, uh, also some aspects about age of onset and some uh, issues that we will work collaboratively on molecular psychiatry and molecular genetics of ADHD are our main uh, contributions to the field of ADHD. So that is a very important uh, point you set in. 
also because this series are supposed also to address ADHD to many people who are still thinking ADHD is something that does not exist. And what you said about the role of the environment is important because very early diagnosis make parents, teachers, society have a different impact as environmental, right? Say in a position that can be in favor of this better developmental uh, skills, right? It's amazing what you have told mm -hmm. us, but I, I'm, I'm afraid that you have answered the whole question. All questions. of them, <laughs> yes, yes, no oh. questions. I, I, I wonder I how you- the have, third, the third one, because the second yeah, is already- to, It's already answered, so move, yes. move on. The, the, the last one, maybe if, he, Dr., if Dr. Rode wants to, to add something else, because on which steps from the way through your ADHD road would you say you are today? And what do you imagine the aviation field to be like in the future? Um, I think that uh, I'm uh, from the middle uh, to the end, I would say. Uh, and um, I think that uh, we, uh, I think that we are able uh, to develop uh, a very important uh, research hub uh, on ADHD in South America. I think that uh, even considering other areas of mental health research, I think that uh, what, me, uh, what makes me very proud because I think that first of all, as Norma said, uh, ADHD normally is a mental disorder that is not considered by as part of a main or important mental disorder. I'm not quite aware of the situation in Argentina but the great majority of adult psychiatry residency programs in Brazil do not give the enough uh, relevance for ADHD. And the great majority of them do not have any kind of training in service on uh, ADHD. So ADHD is a disorder that is not well represented, uh, represented in the portfolio of mental disorders or on the mind of the adult psychiatrists in Brazil. So I think that the ability to create a research center in South America, that is probably one of the five uh, research centers worldwide in ADHD, uh, is something that we have. Uh, it's very important because even for other mental disorders, we do not have uh, this kind of production and this kind of um, protagonism in terms of the mental health uh, research uh, field. So uh, I think that this is something that uh, uh, make me uh, more uh, close to the end of the road than uh, to the beginning uh, of the road. Uh, but uh, in my uh, idea, uh, I was able, uh, I, I'm a, a guy that I'm not very interested in creating buildings, centers, uh, I like to, uh, uh, my understanding, uh, what moves would drive me is much more uh, to have contact and mentor young people. So uh, I was very lucky to have the chance of uh, mentoring some very bright uh, young guys that now are professors, uh, like Guilherme Polanziki, who is professor, is the first author of the paper that we discussed on the epidemiology of ADHD. Uh, I remember Guilherme probably would allow me to tell this story to you uh, when he was in the first year of the medical school as I was with Professor uh, Maria Lucrecia Zafas when he was the, the first year of the medical school. He uh, knocked in my door at the hospital and uh, uh, asked him to talk with me. I have never met him. I say, yes, I have always the open door for the students. Uh, the door opened for the students, and he said to me, very polite, uh, uh, Dr. Hoji, I want to work with Dr. Biederman. How can I do it? And I said to him, oh, uh, it's very easy. First begin to work with me, and then <laughs> later on, we will see uh, what happened. Uh, so, uh, 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 and then we developed, Guilherme was my... Uh, uh, a research assistant, was my student at a master degree, the doctoral degree. Uh, so I was very lucky uh, to uh, mentor a lot of uh, young uh, investigators in the area. 
and uh, coming from the middle to the end, I want to uh, mentor more, uh, uh, some more two, three uh, uh, students that uh, can make a difference in the field. And as I said to, in another uh, interview, very similar to this one, uh, I was able to mentor some of very bright uh, men. I think that I need to uh, mentor, have a chance to mentor uh, some woman uh, that can be also make a difference uh, in the field. So this is something that is lacking in my uh, uh, trajectory and I want to uh, uh, be able to develop in the future. Well, uh, how for, do for I- us, For us, uh, opportunities for us, what you're sharing with us is like, uh, so important because we are uh, just trying to uh, organize this chapter ADHD. We both have been working for clinician adults ADHD for years and Eleonora's husband is Claudia Michani, is a psychiatry, child psychiatry, but maybe you know, he was working also with Joseph. I know him, yeah. Say. Yes, he's a, an amazing uh, referral for ADHD in Argentina. Uh, but we need to encourage young professionals to do more research, to do more like clinical first approach with this phenomenological, you say, all these traits that you, we have to uh, encourage them to read more. So this is one of the things that we're trying to do with this uh, episode is like increasing awareness for professionals to be curious and try to join and train for being able to seek for these patients because they don't see them, right? And uh, uh, if I can uh, leave a message uh, for uh, 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 the people in Argentina is that uh, it's uh, worth to pursue a career on ADHD in research on ADHD. Uh, whatever I was able to develop here in Porto Alegre, for sure anyone can develop in Buenos Aires, in uh, any other center uh, in uh, Latin America. Uh, we have, obviously, we have some, um, uh, some barriers as uh, Latin American. Uh, I always remember another story. Uh, I think that this kind of interview, what is interesting is to tell stories. Uh, the story, this story is from one of the professors of our department who was, who was uh, the former, one of the former presidents of the International Psychoanalytic Association. Uh, and uh, he uh, used to make a joke, and this is a joke, that our uh, friends from, uh, from uh, North America and from above equator they love, uh, he's talking about Brazilians, they love Brazilians, but uh, they love Brazilians that speak a good English and, not, and do not appear as Brazilians. Uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, so uh, this is a joke, uh, but this is to say that there is a lot of uh, barriers for us uh, in Argentina, in Brazil and other yeah. Latin American countries doing research and trying to show our uh, clinical work, but we can do it. Uh, yes. We can do, uh, no. and uh, we have uh, conditions to uh, uh, go uh, over these uh, difficulties and uh, to uh, make a difference in terms of uh, research and clinical work in mental health. We have all the conditions. We have uh, huge sample sizes. We have creativity. We have flexibility. Uh, we work hard, so we have other conditions for uh, this um, to accomplish to accomplish uh, these uh, tasks. Regarding the future of ADHD that you asked me, um, I think that uh, what I would like to see in the field, I'd like to see uh, probably. Let me see uh, some issues. The first one that we can work a little bit to decrease the stigma associated with ADHD, that I think it's a very huge problem for the patients, for the children, adolescents, and adults with ADHD. I don't know how is the situation currently in Argentina, but in Brazil, there is a lot of uh, stigma and prejudice against uh, the patients with uh, ADHD, and a lot of negative labels 
associated. So working to uh, uh, make this situation better is something that would be important. The second issue is to uh, make aware of our, our colleagues from adult psychiatry uh, to make, as we discussed uh, some minutes ago, to make them more aware about ADHD and the relevance of ADHD as a serious mental disorders, disorder affecting an adult uh, population. So I think that bringing this knowledge and trying to uh, diffuse, uh, divulgate this knowledge is important. In terms of the field, uh, I also uh, expect that probably we will be uh, in an area that in the future we can have more uh, precise medicine, we can have a more idea about who will be the child with ADHD that will continue to have ADHD, uh, who are, uh, how to calculate the risk, uh, uh, which are uh, the pharmacological, non-pharmacological treatments that are more suitable for which uh, uh, subpopulation of patients with ADHD. And uh, I think that probably uh, decreasing a little bit the heterogeneity that is inside the diagnosis of ADHD, making more clear uh, difference uh, between subgroups of patients is something that I, uh, is my vision that is something that would make a difference in terms of the field. It's a, an enormous honor and pleasure, uh, Luis, for us as a South American professional to have you in this field and with all the research you've done, I'm sure that Eleonora feels the same and uh, spreading all this very scientific information, serious, and with all this uh, passion that you transmit for your work. It's an amazing message for every, everybody in our community, professionals and families. I don't know, Leonora, if you want to say something. Yes. Muchas gracias, and thank you very much, Dr. Rodin. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be, and it would be an honor to be with you presentially, personally, instead of just uh, yes. by, uh, online. Okay, I, thank I, you very I, much. We'll do bye. That. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye. bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye.